Hello, I'm David Kerr and you are watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. An Italian judge who was murdered by the Sicilian Mafia is set to be declared blessed by Pope Francis. On December the 22nd, the Pope authorised a decree recognising Judge Rosario Leventino's death in September 1990 as a martyrdom born of hatred for the faith. 37-year-old Judge Leventino was gunned down after a Mafia hit squad ran his car off the road as he was driving on a Sicilian highway. His cause of beatification was opened in 1993. It has since collected testimony of the judge's heroic virtue and deep personal piety. Indeed, in 1993, Pope St. John Paul II praised the late judge as, quote, a martyr of justice and indirectly of the Christian faith. Judge Leventino's beatification ceremony is due to take place on Sicily in the spring of next year. The search is still ongoing for a Catholic bishop in eastern Nigeria who was kidnapped at gunpoint on Sunday night. Bishop Moses Chikwe was abducted less than two miles from his residence in the city of Oweri in the country's Imo state. The 53-year-old cleric has been auxiliary bishop of Oweri since October of last year. According to media reports, Bishop Chikwe's car and Episcopal vestments were later found abandoned near the diocesan cathedral in Oweri. The kidnapping of Bishop Chikwe comes only a week after the abduction of another Catholic cleric in the same state. Father Valentin Izegu was abducted on December the 15th by armed men while he was on his way to his father's funeral. He was released by his captors a day later. In recent years, Nigerian priests and female religious have increasingly become targets of kidnappers, with criminal gangs assuming that diocese or religious orders will pay a ransom for the release of prisoners. The President of Iraq has delivered his Christmas greetings to the country's Christians. Speaking prior to midnight mass in St Joseph's Cathedral in the capital city of Baghdad, President Barham Sali said that the world needs to learn from Christ's teaching, which he summarised as the concept of love, cooperation and tolerance for the sake of humanity in the spirit of peace and coexistence. President Sali also said that he was excited at the prospect of welcoming Pope Francis to Iraq in March of next year, and especially to the ancient city of Ur, which is the birthplace of Abraham. The president said he recognised that Iraqi Christians have suffered a lot at the hands of extremists and terror groups in recent years, with many being killed or forced to flee. He stressed that the religious and cultural rights of Iraqi Christians should be protected. He also promised to step up efforts to bring displaced Iraqi Christians back home in order to, quote, live a secure and dignified life in their homeland. The state of Massachusetts in the US has voted to legalise abortions up to the day of birth and to lower the age at which girls can procure an abortion without parental knowledge or consent to 16. The abortion law reform bill was vetoed last week by the state's Republican governor, Charlie Baker. This week, however, the Massachusetts House of Representatives and Senate both voted to override that veto. The Catholic bishops of Massachusetts have consistently opposed the pro-abortion legislation known as the Roe Act, stating that the taking of human life is, quote, not morally acceptable and is particularly harmful to the common good. Pope Francis has stripped the Vatican Secretariat of State of Responsibility for Investment Funds and Real Estate Holdings. In a papal edict issued December the 28th, the Holy Father transferred responsibility for such matters to the body which functions as the Holy See's treasury, known as the Administration of the Patrimony of the Apostolic See, or APSA for short. The move follows criticism of the Secretariat of State for investing in a controversial property development deal in London, which has seen significant losses for the Holy See, coupled to exorbitant management fees. The Vatican say the transfer of responsibility marks a significant step towards increased financial oversight and transparency, and demonstrates, quote, how Pope Francis not only launches reforms, but accompanies them with precise guidelines. The changes come into effect on January the 1st. Meanwhile, the Pope has also announced a special year dedicated to the family. The year will begin on March the 19th, 2021, the Feast of St. Joseph. It marks the fifth anniversary of the publication of the Pope's apostolic exhortation, Amoris Laetitiae, on the pastoral care of families. The new papal initiative is being overseen by the Vatican's Dicastery for Laity, Family and Life. They say the pandemic experience of the past year has highlighted the central role of the family as, quote, the domestic church, and has also shown the importance of community ties between families. The Pope's Year of the Family will conclude on June the 26th, 2022, with the opening of the 10th World Meeting of Families, which is taking place in Rome. Finally, relics of the Auschwitz martyr St. Maximilian Kolbe have been gifted to the Chapel of the Polish Parliament in Warsaw. 
The relics were handed over in an official ceremony on December the 17th, gifting them were the Provincial of the Conventual Franciscans in Poland and the Guardian of the Nepokolanov Monastery, which was founded by St Maximilian in 1927. St Maximilian Kobe was a Polish Franciscan priest who volunteered to die in place of a stranger in the German death camp of Auschwitz in 1941. His relics in the Polish Parliament now join those of Pope St John Paul II and the Italian paediatrician St Gianna Beretta Mola. Well that's all for now. Do join me again next time for some more news headlines from across the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.